them step in the vomit. Let them pick it up. Who cares? Rub it all over you, just like Ebola did in that uh, that crazy video we played once here um, on the Infowars Nightly News. And who knows what's going on with Ebola? We're going to find out soon. I will tell you this. I've been getting a lot of emails on the whistleblower hotline of people saying they're bringing people in. They think it's Ebola. They're keeping it hush-hush. I'll call some of these hospitals. The, the PR people, administrators, go, oh, no, we didn't bring anybody in. And then I'll call the source and say, hey, they said they didn't bring anybody in. They're like, no, they're at this door, and this is the code name they're giving them. And then I'll call the person back, and I don't get any calls back after that. So it's really weird. I don't know how many cases they are hiding. I'm sure they're hiding a lot. We've had reports from doctors of them whisking patients away. We've had reports down at the border there whisking people away. We've had reports of people coming from Africa, crossing over illegally. Who knows what is really going on because we aren't getting the truth from the mainstream media as we showed you earlier from those that Washington Post article. But let's go on to this, this totally ridiculous bit of news. Uh, this is from Steve Watson. 10-year-old suspended for pointing imaginary ray gun. So it wasn't even a real ray gun. It was just imaginary. In a now all-too-familiar scenario, a fifth grader has been suspended in Massachusetts, of course, after pointing an imaginary ray gun and saying, pow. 10-year-old Nicholas Taylor was suspended for two days by officials at Stacy Middle School in Milford following an incident which took place in the cafeteria. Nicholas, who has no history of bad behavior, is said to have cut in line in the lunch queue and mouthed laser sounds coming from an imaginary ray gun, otherwise identified as his own finger, pointed at the other students in line. Nicholas told reporters that he was not pointing the weapon at any other students, but he was simply amusing himself. How dare he do that? P poor Nicholas. <laughs> I mean, it just shows you how out of control it's gotten. Okay? We're going to let people walk through e possible Ebola messes in hair salons, but somebody does this and goes, meow, meow, meow. We're going to suspend them from school? What is that teaching our kids? You have to ask yourself, well, it's teaching them to be slaves. It's teaching them to line up, be subservient to authority. I want to go to this oldie but goodie. This is a report we, we uh, put out in January 25th, 2013, titled, Alex Jones Goes on Arm Rampage with Bubble Gun. Oh, my gosh. This is an oldie but goodie that we produced. We'll be right back after this with an interview from Ray McGovern. It's the InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm your host, Rob Dew. You rolling? Yep. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming here for the staff meeting. Alex will be joining us in just a few minutes. I'd like to thank my new assistant, Rob Dew, who's been demoted for this purpose. Now, uh, I have a few stories i like to go over, but first, Darren McBreen, uh, what do you have there? Well, it's kind of interesting. The Chinese government recommends that uh, our government starts confiscating... Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry I'm late. Whoa, Look at this. Whoa, 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 Alex. Hey, man. What's, what's, hey, man. what's going on? Check it out, man. We've got that office party, and, you know, I gave presents to all the kids at the Christmas party. I'm thinking that office party coming up. Uh, I'm thinking we'll have these as party Alex, papers. Check whoa, this whoa, out. Alex, Alex, Alex. What are you guys acting weird for, hey, man? Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, whoa. Alex, I have, I have this article. That's a bubble here. gun. A five-year-old girl was suspended after a terroristic threat when she brought a pink bubble gun, just like that. What is this, a prank or something? We're supposed to be having a meeting. No, That's a bubble gun. You can't have that stuff, Alex. You can't. Is that a safety? Yeah. What are you, you guys freaking out? You can't bring that around, Alex. Alex that is a fully you know automatic car? bubble gun. Listen, Jakari, I know you're joking. There's no all right, story. All right, look, hold Alex. On. Hold on, hold on. Let me talk to Melissa. Melissa, oh. what's going on? I don't know what's going on. That's a bubble they gun. They almost arrested an elementary school girl last week for having a paper gun at school. That's 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 but what is this about a bubble gun? The Hello Kitty thing? Yes. I thought that was a joke. It's not a joke. This is not a joke. Alex Jones. Terroristic threat. Alex, I'm not gonna be subjected to this. It's a detergent. Yeah, Guys, come on, it's a bubble gun. If that detergent gets in my eye, I'm in. That's assault. Turn it, turn it. That's assault. Turn it off. That's, this is the it, that's assault. Matter. It doesn't matter. The, the, the government says it's bad, that Alex. Inappropriate. Well, then talk some sense to them. No, that, that, you, should see the, you should see what they're saying. Okay, well, what party favors can I have then? Look, it's bubbles, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Everybody stay calm. Hold on, hold on. Get David. Call the police. Call the police. David, talk sense to him. Hey, what the hell is going on? Stop this. No, he's getting too loud. Yes. Yeah, yeah, what the hell? Somebody call. It's crazy. It's 911. 911. 911. Talk sense. 911. I, I, I am. I'm being held hostage by Alex oh, Jones, man. the uh, the conspiracy theorist. It's a bubble gun. NBC <laughs> says we should. It's a bubble gun. Alex Jones. Turn that off. Turn that off, man. Turn that off.
the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day but it's not just the air outside that's toxic indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air and most americans spend 90 percent of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes there are more than 42 million smokers in the united states well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions and don't forget the fact that six million americans live with pets they're allergic to as well when i began to research these statistics it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the usa the new infowars life lung cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment now available exclusively at infowarslife.com or by calling toll free 888 253 3139 Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Welcome back. Our next guest was a CIA analyst for over 27 years. He joins us now to talk about FBI surveillance, among other agencies also surveilling us, and what's going on with Martin Luther King, and we're even going to get into Russia and ISIS. Joining us now is Ray McGovern, ex-CIA analyst, and we're going to talk about FBI surveillance and a, a whole host of agencies. Ray, it's just come out in the New York Times that there's at least 40 agencies conducting undercover operations. Um, how much have you had to deal do, dealing with this, you know, at your time in the CIA and then even since you've been out of the CIA, what, what have been your run-ins with these undercover operations? Well, this is a growth industry, of course. Uh, never has there been so much money around, and these people need something to do, and so they end up monitoring and intrusively surveilling people like the Catholic worker, uh, the Quakers, the Thomas Merton Center in Pittsburgh. It's, re it's reached ridiculous lengths, and... Uh, a lot of this stuff has to do with entrapment. A lot of it has to do with uh, monitoring things that really should be private. Yeah, I totally agree. And we've seen with the Amish even, them just trying to sell raw milk. They've been the target of stings, FBI stings, where they've gone in and taken people's farms just for selling milk. But um, getting into uh, this letter that came out also from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the suicide letter that the FBI actually wrote to Martin Luther King detailing a bunch of things that they said they had tape of him on. And it just really shows to the great lengths that they go to to pe put people under that threaten the system as it is. What's your experience with this? Well, my experience, of course, is uh, goes back to uh, decades ago when J. Edgar Hoover was running roughshod over everyone. Uh, one of the questions here, of course, is uh, Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy? approving the intrusive surveillance, the wiretapping of Martin Luther King Jr.? I asked my friend Colleen Rowley about that, and she said, Ray, <laughs> they were not only eavesdropping on, uh, on Martin Luther King Jr., they were eavesdropping on the Kennedy brothers. They yeah. knew exactly what the Kennedy brothers were doing with those nice little girls in the pool there in the White House. And, and, so and Marilyn Monroe, they actually have detailed accounts of them visiting Marilyn Monroe, both of the brothers, even in the same night. Right. So the name is blackmail, mm -hmm. pure and simple. And the irony here is that Frank Church warned specifically about that, and that's specifically why there is a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act dated 1978, which, of course, has been pretty much revoked uh, by, uh, by current legislation 
the current legislation being in gross violation of the Fourth Amendment of our Constitution. As Colleen explains to me, it just takes the judiciary several years to catch up with these illegal laws. Illegal laws? Yes, it's not an oxymoron. They are illegal if they're unconstitutional. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, uh, you were also a victim of, of being arrested for going after Petraeus, who was also a victim of this illegal surveillance. Let's get into Petraeus a little bit and detail how the system, you know, they eat their own, essentially. <laughs> they do. You know, the supreme irony, uh, I was uh, surveilled, and so they knew I was coming to just see Petraeus. I might ask a question, as I did Rumsfeld several years ago. Uh, but then I got to thinking, well, you know, that's the supreme irony is that Petraeus himself was done in. Why was he done in? Because he became too big for his britches. Uh, and I don't just mean, you know, Paul a Broadwell affair. I, I mean, as far as the White House was concerned, he was so crassly um, ambitious and ready to seize the Republican nomination one time uh, removed here that they wanted to get rid of him. And so on the day after Election Day, when Obama was re-elected, re they presented him with the results of looking through all his emails to Broadwell and others. Now, Petraeus, of course, thought he had deleted them, but not so. General Alexander from NSA and Bob Mueller from the FBI uh, did the, the dirty work for the White House and laid it out in front of Petraeus and said, now you have, to, you have to resign. And so, you know, when people say, I have nothing to fear, well, <laughs> even four-star generals have a lot to fear. And uh, that people should be aware of that. The other thing I'll, I'll mention here, because it's terribly important to me, we had a fellow named Elliot Spitzer. Now, he was governor of New York, and he also was going after the Wall Street firms who were clearly uh, ripping us off right and left. Now, what happened to him? Well, the eaves dropped on him. Same guys, Alexander from NSA, Bob Mueller from the FBI, and they got him, right? They got him good. Now, where are Alexander and Mueller working now? They're working for Wall Street. They have a wonderful, a wonderful uh, cyber defense firm uh, for which Alexander alone is making a million dollars a month. And so you talk about the appearance of conflict of interest. Well, <laughs> forget appearance. These guys did the bidding of Wall Street. They did the bidding of the White House. They're out of government now, and they're making it big with Wall Street by having this pretend uh, cybersecurity firm, which is bringing in lots of bucks. Uh, I don't know what you do with your second million dollars, but they certainly know what they're doing, and they have multiple million dollars uh, by virtue of services performed while in the government and getting Elliot Spitzer, who is about to nail Wall Street big time. And who, who knows what else they have, uh, money or otherwise, information, because you know how this revolving door works. Once you leave Washington, you still have your ties in there. And it also reminds me, you know, uh, Petraeus said he, he thought he deleted the emails. Well, all those celebrities out there thought they deleted those naked pictures off their phones, but the cloud doesn't delete anything. And this is something that I think people aren't aware of, this yeah. cloud computing system that's been set up. It's basically there to gather all your information. It's not there to save it for you. It's there to collect it so they could put algorithms on you. Sure, and it's in gross violation of the Fourth Amendment, and that's the important. You know, for people who say, I've got nothing to hide, you know? Well, after Ed Snowden revealed the first tranche of his documents, they asked an old Stasi, the Stasi being the East German Security Service, uh, those who have seen The Lives of Others, that wonderful film, Das Leben der Anderen, know how intrusive those Stasi fellows were with their uh, earphones and so forth. Well, uh, Wolfgang Schmidt, who was a like a lieutenant colonel in the Stasi, was asked, what, what do you think about people who say, I have nothing to hide? And here's what he said. This is incredibly naive to say the government will not use this against you. This is why they collect the information in the first place. The only way to prevent it 
from being used against it is to prevent it from being collected in the first place. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. And he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, that's it. And back then, they were still in an analog world. They had not yet crossed over into this digital realm where storage and surveillance and cameras and everything. I mean, we're walking around with our own surveillance pagers, essentially, for the government. Our